Hey guys, so I know there's been like 8 million videos on me mechanicing and stuff, but it's stuff we had to get done. And then we've been still at uh, Dana's daughter's house for like, like a month doing this stuff. Intermixed with that, Carrie's been sewing curtains and she just about got the curtains done. But we had a couple other things and that was we wanted to be able to open the windows and not have the flies come in or mosquitoes because it's coming into that season right here and we're getting ready for it and this is something we put off to the last minute but now it's getting done and that's what carrie's doing today she's building the last screen uh, back emergency window screen for the bus trying to figure out how to thread this machine after the months of threading? <laughs> um, I think so. I'll double check your work. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys think that uh, this is Carrie's machine, but actually this is my machine because I'm that nerdy and secure with my masculinity. <laughs> oh, is that what you call that? <laughs> of course, I mean, if there was going to be a manly sewing machine, honestly, this would be the manly sewing machine. I mean, short of a like a camouflage paint job, like this thing is a man's sewing machine, obviously. Right, you can sew leather and canvas and all and kinds in tactical of manly gear, manly obviously stuff. tactical yeah. gear. Well, I'm making some tactical gear for our windows. That's right, tactical screens. Right. To keep the the our enemies, the yeah. mosquitoes out. Yeah, it was easy to make like normal house screens for the side windows of our bus. But for the back window, there was no obvious way of making a normal screen. We had to be creative. Let's show them why. Here is the back window. Big rectangle, right? Um, the big problem is if you put a screen in, this guy's in the way. So we came up with a way, we're just gonna put a slit for that and then it's gonna magnet around and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna magnet to the inside aspect of the window frame and that way we can get a screen over this thing. So I hope it works. It's gonna work. <laughs> Sewing the fabric into the screen. Oh shoot, I just sewed over my magnets place. Uh oh. I have to stick a magnet in real quick. So we bought these beefy little magnets right here at Ace Hardware. It was like $4.79 for six of them. And we're gonna use a whole bunch in this thing to keep them in. These are buff though. Like if you watch Carrie take it off, she struggles to get those things apart. They're pretty tough magnets. Why'd you put two pins there for? Uh, that's where a magnet goes. Oh. Like this. Get in there, magnet. We're almost there. Okay. Nice. And then I tell you, you're gonna sew where the pins are to capture that magnet. Yeah, right? to the left and right, so it stays in that little pocket. Gotcha. You know, that one needle has lasted about 8,000 years, man. I shouldn't have said anything. Titanium. Yeah, oh, now you found you my little it. snippers. Uh, yeah, they've been in the box the whole time. Oh. It just occurred to me, like, one of my biggest frustrations has been, you know, because I have to go in and out of the bus yeah. to iron and sew and iron and sew. Forgetting the back scissors. Back yeah, and, and then I, exactly, I go back chasing after this stuff I forgot 58 times. So I decided to just leave these out here and leave the other scissors in there. This happens in the construction world, too. With tools. <laughs> This is that was my nemesis in this bus, like back and forth, tape measure left outside or pencil left outside, like over and over. And, and for you, and yeah, again. and it's up and down the bus steps every bus single fit. time. That's bus bus fit, fit, man. Total I can't believe I'm not fit. like a, a skinny tweaker looking <laughs> guy because I should have lost that kind of weight building this bus. You should look all buff like Atlas or something. I know, these are all bus things. Things bigger on a bus, like in Texas. <laughs> this is. Stitching beside the magnets. Got it. So you just make it like a little magnet pocket. Yep. Those little things are handy, huh? What the magnets? No, the, this. Uh, oh, the those snippers. Snippers. I love them. You can get right in there and just take the tiniest little bites. 
They still stick to the dang magnets though. I can't, I can't control my snipping. <laughs> yeah, the things you don't think about when you're sewing magnets into something, they're sticking to everything metal. Your pins are being pulled towards they it. Stick to the they stick to the sewing machine. machine. It's not as bad with these small ones, but when I was sewing with the big magnets, like oh, yeah. they just wanted to stay stuck and I would start sewing and the stitching would just start going around the <laughs> magnet instead of next to it, right? you know? like. Uh. See the magnet bulge right under her finger there. Yep. These were the half inch magnets. I think they were actually seven, seven sixteenths or something like that. Jesus. I know, I'm making them buff. That was very, very buff. It's not a parachute rig, you know. We might have to parachute with this screen, baby. I think we're gonna die. <laughs> I don't have the ones in the corners yet. See, and look at the rivets over here. Mm -hmm. Like that's right where the magnets need to go. It's okay. It'll just magnet. I'm going to put it at 12 and a half. Here's the test screen we made with the test slit in it to see if it would work right. Yeah, we just have to figure out like how big the slit actually needs to be because this is definitely way too big. Pull it over and see how it reacts up against that edge right there. Yeah, I think, I think it works good like that. All right. All right, there's the big slit. That's going to allow the gas strut to still be there while we have the screen in place. Screen in place. You need to, don't you have to bring that all the way in? Bring what all the way in? You help, like, don't you want it to be right up against it? Nope. <coughs> Because she this has a way, plan. Well, their fat cylinder is going to be in the place right here holding this gaping open, right? Mm -hmm. But if there's a flap of fabric coming up and a flap of fabric coming down, I can stick a little, a little magnet in them and they can come together oh, okay. and shut right Good there. Idea. That way no bugs are crawling in through that tiny opening. Brilliant. I might not even need the magnet, to be honest. Like just the flap of fabric might Cover it up kind enough. of yeah cover the opening enough so we'll just have to try it and see okay there nice perfect and now the other side whoa Whoa, Nelly. Okay, this is the last part of the little split here is that you have to put a square of fabric on the top and the bottom so it holds the raw edges of those pieces underneath. And it also keeps it from tearing further yeah, up. Exactly, right? yeah. It's, and so we're gonna reinforce stitching all the way around this. Oops, no, nope, one more stitch. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not happy with that one either. There. Just put it right where I want it. Clearly. Mm-hmm. If you do a Z here, you can get all the areas. You can do a cross stitch or a cross pattern. Okay, so Z. If you and went then... back to this corner, this corner, then this corner. Wait, wait. So if I go Z across right now, mm -hmm. and then this, then and no. then this. No, no, then, wait a minute. Yeah, you can't, there's no way. Boom, boom. What the hell, I did it before, now I've lost You have to go over, there's no way yeah. you can do it in just one neat pattern. Like you have to stitch over this top of Oh, actually if you went over here, point. 
then here, here, and here, you wouldn't yeah. have to go over any stitching. So I go down this side next. Mm -hmm. stitch man for sure well I had to get the pin out of there dude whoa not too fast there Nelly I'm I've named your sewing machine Nelly at this point I heard it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's gonna look all pro. Heck yeah. Procrastinated. <laughs> <laughs> it only took me two months to sew my curtains and screens. <laughs> you still can't do it without stitching over the top again. All you gotta do is go back to the corner there, you're done. There's still the bottom oh. edge right there. I guess so. You can't do it. Yeah, you have to go back over your stitching at some point. I did it the other day perfectly. No, you didn't. I you totally went did. over the top of your stitching. It I can't did be done. Not. Oh, okay. Denial. I'm not going to argue with you, but you're wrong. I had it figured out. Now I forgot again. No, it literally can't be done. You have to go back over the top of your stitching at some point. go look at my test to see if I did that or not. It's not a competition, Mike. It is a competition. Who's a better sewer? I'm a way better sewer than you. Oh, I can see that. There's no way you could make a princess dress. And I've got pictures of the ones I made. I can prove it. I wouldn't make a princess dress. <laughs> but I'd you make would a, wear one. I'd make an awesome plate carrier. <laughs> plate carrier? See, you don't even know what that is. You're dumb. Like a in a vest? Bulletproof vest. Rifle armor plate carrier. Yeah, I What's was, up? I was picturing dinner plates. I was like, they call that a picnic basket, you idiot. <laughs> I hate you. Okay, I don't have the corner magnets in yet, so I have to still stick those on. Okay. Here's the big test. barely makes it <laughs> barely like another eighth of an inch would have been nice this is like seriously just barely wow real good real good your overlap idea was amazing okay. was really good cool i guess i have a future sewing bus window screens For, yeah just very niche market i would go bald pulling my hair out right. if i had to sew for a living <laughs> you'd probably get good at it like better than you like you're good at it now but you'd get like muscle memory and it's stuff. very true because i know how to sew and i know all the basics of sewing and that you know that you have to do everything in the proper order but when you don't do it on a regular basis you get a little rusty mm -hmm. at all those details and then once you start doing it you're you get into a rhythm so yeah i'm probably going to be really good at making bus curtains by the time i'm all done with this project and never make a bus curtain again Oh, I could just slide it in from this end. I'll just do that. Because I can't sew past the magnet because it right. gets in the Pushes way of the, the foot. foot. Off. I need a magnet. The tip magnet. of my thumb is getting uh. sore from doing this over and over These and over again. These magnets are buff. Yeah, they are. Okay, so it has to go this way. I'm 
so bad. Hope it works. Okay, you want to try it again before we go any farther? Let's go see what it is. Okay. A big test right here. Well, I don't have the magnet in the bottom, so I can't tell 100% for sure. Yeah, but it hugs that thing perfectly. Oh yeah, this part? That worked out great. You did a great job. Oh, thanks. That's awesome. Okay, might as well stitch these up. Gross, I can't believe I've been letting you film my hands looking like this. <laughs> my fingernails are dirty and ragged and jagged and torn off. I'm, I'm in rough shape, you guys. All this weeks and weeks of all this sewing has just worn me down. I'm ragged and I'm dragging. I'm feeling low energy. This is it. The screen for the back window magnets on the two sides and the top edge, but it's there's just wood on the bottom edge. So we're putting little weights in the bottom edge of the screen, just so when the wind blows, it doesn't like, you know, blow the screen in. So we're using fishing sinkers. That's right. You have to know that was Michael's suggestion. Of course it was. <laughs> Okay. Immediately knew exactly what we needed. So where, where are you going to put the uh, weights? Just in between each pin, there's going to be one weight, weight in each section there. Oh, okay. There, that one went in a little bit easier. Last one. This means we have leftovers. Nice. We're, we're gonna have some fishing to do. Okay, so this magnet is not going to go down in the corner because there's only wood down there. It has to go up in this edge where it can stick to metal. Okay, got it in there. Okay. This is it. This is like the final stitching on the final screen. Almost, because you got to lock those magnets in. Oh, I got to. You're yeah. right. I have to do all the little tiny stitching. Not magnet sinkers. These are just my little barriers to create a pocket to where the sinker can't slide any farther than that. Gotcha. So I basically just marked every seven inches along the whole bottom of the thing. Gotcha. <sighs> I'm super self-conscious about my fingernails now that I know you're filming me. You put this on. Okay, let's see how this puppy's gonna work. <sighs> so far, so good. Nice. Magnets are so awesome. I wonder if in ancient days when magnets were first discovered, if people thought they were magic. Right. Because that's what I would have thought. Totally. I mean, because they work like magic. The problem is that what they didn't know is that they hadn't discovered metal. <laughs> uh -huh. 
until they discovered iron and they were like holy crap this rock is sticking to my sword <laughs> i'm not sure i like the way the sinkers are working i think they're working good enough they don't lay flat and that never occurred to me that the egg shape of the sinkers would make the fabric like pucker and ripple up off the edge of the wood like if we had put something flat in there they would have laid down flat really the the perfect perfect thing would have been to just continue using magnets because they're a little bit heavy mm -hmm. and they still lay flat but they're kind of expensive is the whole reason I was like, well, we don't need them to stick to metal, so there's no, you know, why waste the money on expensive magnets? That's why I was thinking just use fishing weights. I really think this is going to work fine. Yeah, I think... As long think, as there's no big gaps, we're not going to have flies, I like, think it'll work, trying to get through it. But if I was going to advise somebody else to do, who was doing this, I'd say don't use the fishing sinkers. Find something that would lay flatter mm -hmm. to weight it down. No, I think this is a success. This is really good. I like what we did here. We can leave it up. You're done. So I can take a break from sewing for a while? <laughs> Years, I hope. <laughs> well, I think it'll keep most of the bugs out anyway. I do too. Good job. Thanks, Mahomes. I'm ready to take a break. Take a break, everybody. Good job, everybody. Take the rest of the day off. Let's try to get here a little earlier tomorrow. Can we take the rest of the year off, please? We're going to try to get here a little earlier tomorrow. I'm going to take the rest We've of the decade law, off. A lot of work to do. Tomorrow, nothing. No <laughs> more sewing. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not going to happen. Okay. High five on your screen, by the Thanks, way. Thanks, Mahone. Good job. I just realized that we never really showed you all the finished window treatments in the whole bus. I guess because it's taken us weeks and weeks to get them all finished. So starting with the front door, there's magnetic panels that just stick on with these. What do you say? How do you say these kind of magnets? Neobidium. Neobidium magnets. Really powerful magnets, okay? There's magnets in all four of the corners and halfway along the top edge. And the front of these panels is made out of canvas drop cloth from Ace Hardware. And on the back is Insul Shine, which has a layer of this reflective thin stuff, but also a thick layer of insulative batting, I guess, on the inside of that too. So we're really getting an insulated window covering. And then um, basically the same thing up here for these panels in the front windows. Um, there are magnets, only these ones have five magnets all the way along the top edge. So this is what they look like when they're closed. And this is what, what they look like when we just kind of shove them open really quick in a hurry. And then to close them, you just kind of pull the magnets back down and stretch them out wherever you want it to be like that and there's also one over here on this little side window which was interesting because it was the only place where there in the front where there wa um, wasn't metal along the top there was wood so Mike had to screw some metal washers up in there for so these magnets would work and then in the rest of the bus on the left and right down through the whole living room and dining room and kitchen area are more standard curtains with an actual curtain rod. Well, it's a copper pipe curtain rod. <laughs> so these ones open and close more like a traditional curtain and then they just bunch up like this, which for those of you who have been watching, you know how frustrated I was with having to put the reflectics in and out of the windows all winter long, which was a big reason for why we switched to these insulated curtains. So, and there was also a lot of questions and suggestions when we did these, um, the videos on these curtains about how we could have used, um, metal rings or metal grommets up here around these curtain rods and I wanted to point out that the reason we couldn't do that is because we're trying to create an insulative barrier here like basically bus windows are single pane glass whereas the windows in your house are a double layer of glass with a layer of air in between the two panes and the layer of air is the insulative barrier right so we 
are creating an insulated barrier of air in between the glass and the curtain. So we, we didn't want the hot air that's gonna be trapped in there. We don't want it coming around the top of the curtain rod and just flooding into the bus. We had to have this little um, ruffle on the top of the curtain to fill the gap from the curtain rod to the top of the wood here so that that air would stay trapped in there. Did that make sense? I feel like I just did a terrible job of explaining that. <laughs> I'm struggling to find my words right now. <laughs> So this is basically what it looks like in the bus when everything's closed up, whether it's during the day because we're trying to keep out the heat or at night because there's like a major fishbowl effect that happens in a bus. When you have the lights on at night and it's bright in here but dark out there, everybody out there can see everything that's going on in here. So you got to have some window coverings. So um, come on to the back and I'll show you what we have back here too. if I can get enough light back here but obviously you saw that I finally got the screen finished back here and that's working good and this is where I keep the cover for when we want to close the window so I'll just show you how we do that really quick just pull the magnetic screen down I can just fold up and go back up in there And then this comes open. The only thing I would do different in these curtains if I had to make them over again is that I bought smaller magnets for these back window coverings than the ones I used in the front. And the, the ones in the front are an inch and a quarter, like big round circles. And these ones are like half inch circles. And they're not really quite strong enough. This stuff is a little bit heavy and you just, you really want the magnets to stick and hold it super tight. And back here, I find that these coverings just don't hold in place quite as tightly. that one goes and there are these little ones on the sides too that we can take down or put back up so that's it for the privacy settings on the bus I guess and the heat control settings and hopefully cold control settings too um, I guess that's it for the curtain episode and thank you guys for coming with us and coming along on the adventure all these months and we have some new exciting stuff in store for you in fact the next time you see us we're going to be in a new location so come on back subscribe if you haven't already click the like button if you liked my screens or our window coverings and come back and see us next week love you guys bye bye <laughs>